Okay, <clears throat> so lecture number three. For this lecture, we're gonna introduce a subspace topology, closed sets, limit points, and Hausdorff space. So let's shall we start with subspace topology. So let X be a topological spaces with topology X, uh, T, and we given a subset <coughs> Y. Then the collection, which is the set of all y intersects with u where u is open in t. The set of all such this collection is a topology on y called a subspace topology. And with this topology, y is called a subspace. So the open sets are the open sets x, the all the intersection of open sets x with y. So as usual, we should check if ty is a topology. So empty set is in this, and also the entire set y. So we're good. And for finite union, this is equal to this, right? <coughs> this is easy to see. And also the arbitrary union, <coughs> which is equal to this. And as again, this, these are all open, again, open, right? So yeah, this is a topology, yeah, easy to check. Okay, so we define what is a subspace topology. And if we have a basis for X, then this is the basis for the subspace topology. And then we should prove this, okay? So we let U open an X, and we let y be equal b in this. And um, for y and u, if y is in this, then y is in u, right? If y is in, then y is, is an open set, then we have a basis element, right? And again, which means that y is in this. But this is in by which is a subset of u intersect y, which means that for any open set in y, no, for any open set in the topology of y, for, for any y in the open set of y, we can find element in by such that this is true. And then again, we apply lemma 13.2. So, Lemma 13.2 is says that let's go check that again. We always need this. So collection open sets such that um for each open set and y, right? An element an element element in this, then there's an element element in by such that this is true. <clears throat> then this is the basis by lemma 13.2 okay so now we let y be a subspace and if u is open in y y is open in x and u is open in x Ooh, this is this is fun right so if u is open in y then u is in some v intersect y and v is open in x And y is also open in x. So the intersection is open in x. Right. So u is open in x. Because this is true. Okay. Now this one. Lemma. Uh, not, not lemma. Theorem. It says. Oh, well, if a is a subset of x. B is a subspace of y. Then the product topology on a, b. So basically the product topology on the subset is same as the topology AB inherits as a subspace of XY. Okay, so this is a bit abstract. So for this, it's like the product topology of two subset. And this is equal to the subspace topology of A times B, the sub subspace topology. Okay, so take a minute and think about that. 
and the proof is if we let u times v be basis of x times y, okay, then this is the subspace topology because u times v is um, open in x times y, right? And this intersects with this set. So this is like our x, this is, no, this is like our u, and this is like our y, okay? This is a times b. And this is basically, by definition, the subspace topology of x times y. And with this, this is by the set, um, set theory operation, right? So these two sets are equal. And this is open in the A subset topology. And this is open in, this is like open in TA, this is open in TB, right? Well, then this is open in A times B. Okay, this is open in the topology of A, the product topology of the subspaces. Okay. Now, since these two topology having the same open sets, then they're equal. They're equal because they have they have the same open sets, right? All their open sets are the same. Okay. <clears throat> now we move on. Um, here's a concept which is called a convex set. So y subset x is convex in x for each pairs of a, b, and y. Then this, then this is subset of y. And there's another theorem. Well, you can take a minute and read it. And for time, I'll just skip the proof for now. It's on the book and just it's not. It's not really hard. Just read through this, okay? Because I have to um, jump to closed sets right now, okay? So, <clears throat> we're going to define closed sets. Remember how we define closed sets in Walter Rudin's Principle of Mathematical Analysis. We say closed sets are sets contains closed closed means that contains all its limit points right but we have not defined limit points yet but when you study topology we're going to see that we define this and then it leads to the fact that this is true Okay, so this is like the more essential definition. Well, of course, of course, if you define closed sets like this, and then you can find out that closed, if and only if the, the complement is open. Right? You can also use this definition to imply this. And Walter Rudin, but we're going we're going this direction. Okay, so at the end of the day it doesn't matter. But this is like a more topological definition. And for this topological definition, we can find a more analytic definition. And in analysis, we we start with a more analytic definition and we go to a more topological definition. But at the end of the day, they're the Equivalence, right? So it doesn't matter. So <clears throat> the definition of closed sets is that the set is closed if the complement is open. Okay? Now, the following condition is that this and this are closed because the complement of reset is x and the complement of x is this. They're all both open. Okay? And the arbitrary intersection are closed. Also, the finite unions are closed. And this is by the De Morgan's law. It's, just run through the De Morgan's law and you see that they're all good. And with this theorem, you will see that this is a remark in the book. So instead of using open set, we can just specify a topology 
by a collection of sets, which be called a close set, which so, so you can also define a topology like this. And then you define close, so you define open sets. If you define open sets like this, right? If this is your open open prime sets, this is open. If you define open sets like this, right? And you define close sets like this again. And then when we go back to the at the very beginning of our saga, right? Then this is we can we can end with like this, right? So we can just define with as a complex as a close set and per suggest before, but there's no particular advantage over one we have adopted. So there it doesn't matter at all. But most mathematicians prefer to use open sets to define topologies. So let's just follow the genius mathematicians, right? Let's just follow them. Okay. So let y be a subspace of x. Then a set A close in Y if only F equals the intersection of closed set X and Y. A is closed in Y means that it's the intersection of closed set X with Y. Okay? So for this direction, if A is the intersection of C and Y, then X minus C is open in X. Right? Which means that this is open in Y. And x minus c intersect with y is equal to y minus a. So the complement of a and y is open, which means that a is closed and y. Well, why this holds? Why? Because if x is in y but not a, that means that <coughs> x is in y but not in a which means x in y not in a means that you're not in c or you're not in y okay if you're not in c or not in y and they use the distributive law you see that this or this this and this right so this means that this and x is an x, right? <laughs> Which means that um, I use the distributive law again. So x is n y or x is an x. Or end. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so sorry, sorry, there's something going wrong. This should be end and or end. Right. Then Not a C. So X is in Y and X minus C. Yes. I use something, something's going on. Okay. So so yes, this and this. Right. So we're good. Okay, we're chill. Okay. So, we're good with this direction, okay? Now, A is open in Y, so A is closed in Y. Yes, because 
and we keep going with this direction if this is open and y the y minus a is some u intersect with y where u where x minus u is closed then we have this is true so a is equal to some y intersect with closed set of x and this is easy to check okay some set theory with some logic statements and if you move on let y be a subspace of x and a is close in y y close in x and a is close in x so a is close in y then by this by this theorem we just proved then is some um, x minus u where u is open some close set intersect with y right then we know that x minus a right which is the complement of this union with the complement of this okay which is u union with x minus y u is open and y is closed in x so x minus one is open so x minus a is an open set which means that a is closed in x right okay and if we move on, we're gonna <coughs> we're gonna introduce a concept called closure and interior. So this is important in the multivariable analysis, right? We because we define we define an integral on at the very beginning we define integral on interior of a rectangle. Okay. <laughs> So given sub a of topological space x, the interior of a is the union of all open sets in a. And the closure is the intersection of all closed sets containing a. Okay. So this is interior, this is a closure. We use we use usually we use this definition, the closure. And nt is open set and closure a is a closed set because we're taking arbitrary union and arbitrary intersections, right? So, this should be true. If A is open, then A is in A because A is open set. Contain in A, right? And if A is closed, then A is a closed set containing A, right? And we have these equality follows, easy to check, okay? So we move on. So we have a theorem that said, if Y is a subspace of X and A is a subset of Y, then if we let A denote the closure of A and X, then the closure of A and Y is a closure of A and X intersect with Y. So, let's prove this. We let B be the closure of A and Y, okay? Just we let B be the closure of A and Y, which is the, okay, by definition. And we know that this is closed in Y because this is a closed in X. Closed in X. Intersects with Y is closed in Y. We write an essential closed set x with y is closed in y right so this is closed in y and because b is a closure of a and y right it's the intersection of all such closed sets so this is one of the closed sets then b should be in them right because b is all like the all the intersections then the all intersections should be the subset of one of the closed sets, right? Oh, I just explained, yeah, because A is in this, and B is all intersection, okay? For this, A is a subset of A bar, and this is simple, and A is a subset of Y, right? Right, so this is simple. And also, B is closed in Y, 
right? So if B is closed in Y, then it is equal to some intersection C closed in X intersecting with Y. Now, we know that um, A is a subset of C, right? Because um, A is a subset of B, right? So so A is a subset of B intersecting with Y. So in particular, is a subset of C. Well, A is a subset of C, and C is closed in X. So the closure of A and X should be a subset of C, as we explain in here, right? Then we know that this is true, then this is true. Well, this is basically equal to B. So we're done with both directions, okay? So here's an example. I'm lazy to do examples because I just don't want to read them. But as long as you understand the concepts and when you're doing analysis, there are tons of examples for you to do. So. I will avoid giving too many examples in topology lectures. So consider the subspace of real line. And this says that y, okay? The closure of this in R is this. But the closure in Y is this by definition. Which is equal to this. Okay? So um, it's by definition. Oh, here, for this theorem, we're getting more and more analytic, okay? Actually, they're just topologies, okay? They're just topologies. So, okay, so, so here's another theorem. So A is a subset of topological spaces, and X is an enclosure if and only if every open set U containing X intersects A. Okay, and B, you just read it. So you have a basis, then you're in the closure if only you have every basis containing X intersects A. So let's just prove part A first. So for part A, we're going to use contrapositive on both directions. So the proof is, is going to be a lot easier. So if X is not an A, then, if x is not in the closure, <coughs> then it means that x is in the complement, and which is open. x is in some open set, right? And we know that because a is a subset of closure of a, and u intersects with a is empty set, right? Uh, then we know that. U intersect with A is empty. Okay. So oh sh okay, right. And if U intersects A is empty, right. Then A is in some closed sets. No, no, no. U intersect with. A is empty, and X minus U is closed, where A is contained in the closed sets, which means that the closure is a subset of this, right? Which means that the clo if the closure is a subset of this, then the closure, then A intersects U is empty, right? Right? Then we know that Huh? Then we have a closure. What am I doing? U intersects is empty. Right? So what we want is that if X is not an A, then we find a neighborhood. We find a uh, sorry, sorry. So the the, the, the neighborhood neighborhood 
I was, I'm going too straightforward. Okay, I'm going too far away. So, so u is open set containing x. Okay, u is open set containing x. Then, we know that. Oh, this is this direction. This is another direction. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So. If x is not an A, then x is an open set, and this open set intersects with A is empty, right? Because this, then this is in some U open set. If not this, this is an open set. And as A is sort of A and U intersects with A bar is empty, then U intersects with A is also empty. So we find an open set containing x that's intersects way a is equal to, right okay so for the other direction if we have an open set um I'm just, so if we have an open set containing x intersects a gives an empty set then we know that a should be an x minus u, right? And this is a closed set. So if this is a closed set containing A, then we should know that the A bar, right, is in this. Well, this means that x cannot be an A bar. Why? If x is an A bar, if x is an A bar, then x is in the big X minus u. But we assume that x is in u, right? So we, so we can't have x is in a bar. So, the both directions are done. Part a, we're done. Okay, and now it's part b. So, x is in a then every open set containing x intersects a right so every open x is x a is not empty bases are also open sets right so all the bases intersects a is not empty bases containing x okay so this direction we're done and for converse direction if u is open set contains x then by definition right such that this is true. And we know that B intersects A is not empty, then U intersects A is not empty. So for any U intersects A, we have U intersects A is not empty. And by part A, X is in A bar, right? So we're done. Okay. So what is a neighborhood? So uh, here I'm here I'm at. So mathematicians often use some special terminologies here. I'm not a mathematician, all right, so I just follow them. So the shortened statement U is opening set containing X to the phrase is neighborhood. Okay, so this is a lot faster. Instead of saying an open set containing I would say a neighborhood. A neighborhood. So it's a lot faster, right? It saves time. <laughs> So using this terminology, we can write the first half as follows. So A is a subset. So X is an A bar if only if every neighborhood intersects A. Okay. Now, let's go with limit points. So there's another way to describe the closure of a set. A way involves an important concept of limit point. So what is a limit point? So if A is a subset of the topology X, X is a limit point, cluster point, point of accumulation, but I, I prefer to, the word limit point because, um, right, I like it. And it's a limit point of A if every neighborhood of X intersects A at some point other than X, which means that the closure of A, so every intersects 
every neighborhood u of x intersects this, right? <sighs> the x may lie in a or not, but this definition does not matter. It could be an A or it could not be an A, so it does, but it doesn't matter. So, let A be a subset of topological spaces, and A prime is a set of all limit points. Then we have this quality. Does it look familiar from our analysis courses? Yes. So, we're going to show that, okay, so if X is N, the limit point, then this is true by the last theorem, okay? I would just, and we know that this means that this is true. And also we have this is true. So we have this is true, right? Now, so this direction, we're done. For this direction, if x is in closure of a, if x is in a, we're done. So we assume that x is not in a, okay? If as in a, then we're done, right? So if x is in a, the x is in a union with a bar. So this is set of a union a bar, right? But if x is not in a, so we know that this intersects a of all. So all neighborhood intersects a, okay? But x is not in a. So it intersects with this set, right? Because X is not an A, right? Then X is a limit point by definition. So in either cases, we have this is true. And we're done. And here's a corollary. <coughs> a subset is closed if and only if it contains all its limit points. Wow. Right, they're equivalent. So A is closed means that this is true. Well, this basically means this, okay? Fast, really fast. Okay, so we're done for limit points for now. And we're gonna move on to important space called Hausdorff space. So let me introduce this properly, okay? Okay, Hausdorff space. So we know that the single points in R and R2 are closed. Well, this is easy to show, right? So for points not equal to X0, it has a neighborhood not containing X0, right? So any point in R or R2 is not in the closure, right? So it should be equal to its own closure. The closure can't be empty, right? So, you know what I'm saying? It's its own closure, so it's closed, right? It's, it's closed. Because for this point x not alone, you can have a neighborhood that intersects x not. That's the only, that's the only point. All other points are not in the closure, so this is true. So basically we've shown this. And this is by definition, okay? So single points are closed. But, but, this is not true in arbitrary topological spaces, okay? Because many of you guys might think, oh, if it's true in R, or it's true in R2, if it's true in Euclidean space, then it could be true in arbitrary spaces, right? Um, or like, you all have infinite numbers of elements, so they're all so you can't compare them. They're all infinite, but in fact, you can compare them. You can have countable and uncountable elements, right? So, this is not true in arbitrary topological spaces. If we consider B. We consider B in this set, right? Then we have the complement of B is AC, is this set. But the AC is not in the topology, right? 
is is not a topology, so single points are not closed in general. Single point sets are not closed in general. And to discuss this even further, we have to define a conversion sequence in topological space, okay? So fx is topological spaces, and we have a sequence of points in x. You, you all know what's a sequence, right? So like a bijection thing. It's a bijection thing. So x bijection bijective and whatever. Not 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 bijective. Injective. Injective map. Injective. Okay. So a sequence in x converges to some point if for any neighborhood of x there exists a big n such that for any small greater n we have x n is in the neighborhood. Okay. So in R n sequences can converge to more than one point. This is true in R n, right? Sequence can converge to more than one point. But for this topology closed spaces, if we have x n is equal to b, so it's just this element, right? Then x n converges to b, of course, because for any right neighborhood of it converges to b, okay? But x n also converges to a. Why? Because this is a neighborhood of A, right? This is a neighborhood of A. But for any neighborhood of A, we have Xn is in the neighborhood, right? Right? By definition, right? You, you, can, you can think about this, right? So Xn also is equal to limit is A and also is equal to C. Right, so I have to highlight this fact. Okay, so this is like the motivation. All right, so so in gen like mathematicians like they're not interested in spaces that behave like this. So we just want um, you know, we just want to talk about topological spaces that the sequence converge that can converge to more than one point. And spaces like this turns out uh, to be defined in another way, which is defined by Felix Hausdorff. So mathematicians have come to call it by his name. So a topological space is called Hausdorff space. If every point, every pair of distinct points, exists a pair of neighborhood that are disjoint. Okay? So if so in general, if you have if you have x one, x two, then you have u, u, and v. They're disjoint. Okay. So for this, we see that. The finite point sets are closed in Hausdorff space. We can just we just start with single point and we take finite and there's uh, a finite union. It's again a finite point set is closed right by the def by the properties of closed sets. So we just start with single points. We just prove that single points are closed in Hausdorff space. Okay, so we pick a distinct point. Then we have, then we have neighborhoods such that empty intersection. Which means that x naught is not in u, right? So x naught is x u is empty, which means that x is not in a closure. So own, the closure is in own, so which is closed, right? And again, a hostor space makes sure that a sequence converges to at most one point. Like this is the motivation and we define it like this. So it makes sure that this is true, okay? So here's the logic, okay? So suppose that Xn converges to X 
and we pick a distinct point, then we have destroyed neighborhood, right? Then because x and converge to x, then uv is the neighborhood of x, right? So, so that is true. But for all these x and u, because uv are disjoint, be disjoint, then all of them cannot be in v. So x and cannot converge to y. Basically, you look at the negation of converge and, right? You should be good because if it does not converge, then it does not converge to y because we exist a neighborhood v of y such that for any n, we pick we pick n no for any so we exist v okay so let me just write it down for completeness so completion so we exist neighborhood v of y okay and for any n prime we just pick n greater or equal to n prime and n this n okay this n <laughs> then we have x n not n v okay so this is like so this is true okay okay now we have a last one is if x is a Hausdorff and a is a subset of x then x is the limit point of a means that every neighborhood intersects with infinite many points okay this di this direction is trivial so let's just focus on this direction so for this direction, we suppose for a contradiction. So suppose for a contradiction such that we exist a neighborhood intersects with finite, finite. So exist neighborhood with finite many points. If it intersects with a finite many points, then it intersects with a minus x again, finitely many points, right? Okay, so we know that this is closed, so this is open, right? And also, u, x is in u, and also x is in this, right? Because x is not x1, xn, right? Because this intersection with a minus x. And this open set intersect with open set is open, but this set does not intersect this. Why? Because uh, you intersect this and it's like A, right? Which is you can commute the law and the associativity law, right? So you have U intersects A, U intersects A is this. And this intersects with this. It's empty set, right? So what we have here is that we have a neighborhood of x, but it intersects with this set, does not intersect this set. They're disjoint, which means that x is not a limit point. Because if it's a limit point, then it should not be empty, right? So a contradiction because for this direction we assume that it's a limit point so the theorem is proved which means it's a limit point then every neighborhood is with infinite many points right this is like uh if you if you take an example in the real lines right zero one so 
um, 0, 1, and take a point here. So any neighborhood, any neighborhood, right? Any neighborhood. You can always find a set. You can always find a set, right? You can always find a point, right? If you have only finally many points, then it's, uh, it's false, right? You can't have this. It's like something like this, okay? And we're done with lecture number three. And for the next lecture, we're going to start talking about continuous functions.